All right, I think this worked. Look, if you look at the little camera window, you can see the microphone's working. Do you yeah. see that? I see this there. All right, hey everybody, welcome. Hey. Stop looking at all the TVs and just look at the camera. Well, hold on for one second. I need to apologize to the people. So listen, this guy and guacamole, they do not mix. Oh my, I had to get a mop. Let's just put it that way. It's so messy. It's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. But he's okay. Yep, that's, that's the important now. part. Uh -huh. We're all set. EpiPens are magic. Everything's all great. <laughs> so anyway, everybody, thanks for checking in tonight. Um, welcome to episode nine um, of Low Expectations. What's the what's what do we decide to call tonight? Somebody had a big day. Episode nine, <laughs> Low Expectations. Somebody had a big day. Yeah. And as you all know, tonight we're gonna make you one promise: the beer will be great. Mm, yeah, hopefully, it will be great. Yeah, hopefully the beer is good. Yep. But we're not. We will not be. No. No. Mm. Um, I hope you've come to expect it after nine episodes. <sighs> nine episodes in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got this fancy bar graph going on right now. So I can look at this thing and I can see that there are seven people watching it. It went up a little bit. This well, is pretty cool. Why don't you tell the people? Oh, please. Can you tell the people what's going on a little bit? Okay. But please drop something in the chat. Let us know oh, who's yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got the comments up. We're going to be able to see them. Um, you can see it looks a little bit different. It's probably actually clear. We have a real camera here. We have multiple monitors. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. Real microphones. Uh, the uh, a company called In The Mix Light and Sound has come down to, to the basement. Yes, awesome, thank you. And they set up this crazy, incredible setup. They completely took over the Low Expectation mm -hmm. Studio. And then, you know, I tripped on a cable and the we had to move bully. things. And, but uh, he, he, he's an awesome guy and super helpful and, and dealt with all of the things that we threw at him. So uh, I hope that you stick around tonight and have a really good time with us. We have three really, really awesome beverages to share with you. I'm super excited to share them. Yeah, so before we even... No, no Pico de Gio rags. <laughs> It's got the green stuff in it. What is it, cilantro? Yeah. It tastes, so, like, tastes like soap. That's what he says. So I, I love cilantro. But look, mm, thank you. in the, in the uh, spirit of 2021 and full disclosure, we did have a pre-show beverage. We split it. And uh, do you want to show the kids in the pork cam? <laughs> look how fancy this is. Wow. Oh, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> yeah. uh -uh. So we also now... Um, we're gonna try and fire up the pour cam here, and you can see <laughs> this is an Equilibrium beer. It's called OG or Ogs Axe. Let me move back. There we go. I didn't want to go too close. Holy moly, that is so cool. That's crystal clear. Look at that. Wow. Wait. wait so wait. that is Ogs Axe. You got a little guacamole. I, I got this it. Is, stop go. it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that up here, and next. It's glass time. This is one of my favorite glasses from RAR in Cambridge, Maryland. It looks like a regular Cambridge, like a regular RAR glass, but if you look closely, you've got Elliot and ET flying up over the moon. Oh, Isn't that pretty cool? That is cool. Yeah, a lot of people don't even notice it on the glass, but it's a super cool one. And I don't know if you guys. You want me to show yours yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this Go is another it. one of my favorites. He's been digging into the '80s shelf again. <laughs> so this one is called '80s Baby. And I give the credit for having this one to a good friend, Ryan uh, Kreshmar. He, I saw him, a picture of him using this glass, and this is the first glass that I ever hunted, and this is what started my obsession. I had to have this ridiculous, awesome glass. It's incredible. Mainly for the DeLorean. Look at that beauty. Oh, it's wonderful. Did okay. you, uh, there you go. You're not an 80s kid, are you? Well, I was born in 79, so I grew up, I was... Two through, you know, one through 11, two through 11, whatever, yeah, however so you want to say. You're a young 80s kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the more, the more the, the movies and the cartoons, like more of the younger stuff is really what, Sticks what with I you. love. Yeah. yeah that's gotcha. what, I mean, there's, I absolutely love the music too, every bit of the music. Um, my mother was a DJ <laughs> all through the 80s. She was a DJ, and uh, we used to always. She, so she, we heard all the coolest songs all the time, all so the newest songs. What kind of DJ was she like? She at, worked for a company called The Pros. Like she would oh, do I like the pros. She was like, was she wedding, like a wedding weddings DJ? and parties. Yeah, nice. yeah. Um, we used to have a station wagon that she would load the record crates into. 
and we always had like new records and it was it was it was super cool it was fun do you have the linoleum square where you out break dancing no i never went to work with her oh, okay. <laughs> you don't know you were no. collecting tips I, honestly i don't i don't ever remember one time when she went to work I just I know she was she would go to work and work all the time, but I remember like the record everything getting loaded in the car and everything getting unloaded and her coming home like not being home until the morning because she was at weddings and things, but I don't actually remember. Let me just say, events. as someone who was not a baby in the eighties, yeah, because I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit older than you are, buddy. Twenty 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 one makes me miss the eighties. Mm. Uh, have not... you have you read Ready Player One yet? I have. Mm. Have you read Ready Player Two? Have not. Ooh, you have to. Okay. Really great. That's tonight's book tip, ladies and gentlemen. It's a new segment we're going to work in probably never again because yeah. we forget about stuff. But if uh, if I had had taken a long road trip, I would listen to. I like to listen to audio books. Oh, do you? So you know, like I may have if if I was driving today, I would have listened. Like to, when you go up to the lake, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I would have listened to like eight hours of Ready Player One again just to make sure I got it all again. Uh, it's narr the okay. audiobook is narrated by Will Wheaton. It's like nerd heaven. It's the best. Have you it's ever fantastic. had any of the Woot Stouts? Hey, Blaine, how's it going? The Woot Stouts? I've never had the, the Woot Stouts. Oh, my ever. goodness. I've been, I've been slacking. I was so enthralled by your story, I completely ignored the comments. <sighs> You're terrible. I know. I'm terrible at this. So, Banky Jarvis. Any ideas? That's Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Mikey tuned in. I've never seen Mikey tune in before. I don't know. Okay. What did he say? He said, fancy setup. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, this 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 company's Ooh. got it down, man. It's pretty nuts. Your sister is shockingly not impressed with us. <sighs> Which one? Candy. Okay. Uh, Blaine says, hey. Hey, hey Blaine. And, uh, said, hey. Oh, Look. your sister also says we need makeup. <sighs> like sucking the air right out of the room, aren't you? All right, all right. Enough of this chit chat. Let's We're gonna get have to fire this company because I'm not doing makeup. We house. got, we gotta pop the first beer. You're on. All right. So, we're gonna go back to the beer cam. I'm gonna show you the first beer. This is actually uh, one that I picked. It's super fresh, and I picked it just because uh, it reminds me so much of beef. So here we've got it's it's Aslin. It's called Ticklish and Insecure. I and am I'm guessing it's probably gonna ticklish. be a little bitter too. Oh, Ooh. ouch. But I did say it's fresh. It's not old. So, <laughs> oh, look at that! I I didn't even see this on the can, but now I can see it. You know who needs this? Jack needs this camera. He'll be able to read the cans. Oh, it's a sour oh, ale oh, brewed with oh, dragon fruit, raspberries, and vanilla. <laughs> I thought this was an IPA. So oh. we're going. We're, we're we're drinking a sour ale. So, all right, listen, guys. Listen, this guy was in charge of setting up the entire. Um, lineup tonight. Normally I help out. He said, I'm just going to run with it. It's going to be a surprise. So he's got me a little off kilter, but okay. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, doing it. That's pretty look good. At that. Look at that. She's oh, a beaut, Oh my Carl. goodness sake. Oh. She's a oh, beaut. I almost poured it all into my glass. Uh, Sorry. I know. I got to give beaut. you some too. She's a all beaut. Right, here we go. Oh, and I can see that thing in the background. My new cool thing. Can we talk about that next? Um, yeah, no, sure. we can't. we'll talk about it later. We will never mind. <laughs> so let's give this a try. I'm looking at the wrong monitor. There's TVs all around me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Look at this. Wait, wait a second. We got what? Like a almost like a, a half half finger ahead there on top. It, it looks pretty nice. Oh, beautiful lacing on it. Yeah. It smells great. Yeah, it does. I'm actually excited for this. It smells. I wasn't feeling a sour tonight, but I'm excited. It's it smells magnificent. Yep, it's magnificent. Mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude you are not reading you gotta stick up with this or keep up with it stick stick right. to it banky says your sister's impressed with him i doubt it banky i don't know you but based upon banky banky don't mm. take it to the bank um brew pub yeah you could have skipped buddy it's nothing special you know that jack wishes you were wrong about his poor eyesight based on his elderliness the uh, brew pub explorer is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blaine's back in. Uh, Fabs has the old beer. I don't know what that means. Uh, what's going on in the mirror? Banky, what goes on in the mirror stays in the mirror. Fabs is a guy at the lake who who actually started to buy really great beers. He does appreciate good beers. Oh. But he'll buy them 
Serious question. Krista wants to know what lacing is. You referred to lacing. Oh, sure. Um, it's going to be a little hard for me to show it on this one, yeah. but we'll go back to that pour cam. And when you turn the glass and the head sticks to the sides of the glass there, just like you see there. Now that's very limited lacing because it, the head's already gone, but on the next pour, we'll take a look at it. Uh, it usually only works with, uh, you really only see it with a nice clean glass. And, and lacing is a good thing, why? Because it's delicious. <laughs> Plus it shows that the beer has been well carbonated. Oh uh, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want, you want a nice carb carbonation level on your brewski. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know why it's good. I just really love to look at it. It's beautiful. Um, this is a fantastic beer. Because it touches Yay. Tom's artistic soul. <laughs> Way to go, Aslan, on this one. I, I, this... Don't, I can't recall Aslan Sours being uh, at the forefront of my memory. Well. Like, when I think of Aslan, stouts. All day. Stout, stout, the stout. The guy who was there today also had an Aslan Sour, and it was really good. He told me. He told you it was really yeah, good? Yeah, he told me it was really tasty, too. Sweet. So, yeah. Um... This so well done, fantastic. Aslan. Uh, Tom, you want to tell what we're we talking about? Where... I was telling the Fab story. So Fab just... buys good beer, but then lets it sit too long because he buys like too much of it. He really like, and then the beer just turns all malt balmy and all it happens. Um, but we started. Yeah. We started a tradition at the lake. I, I don't know anything. We will. We'll. Cl we'll. Cl <laughs> we'll clear out. I keep cases, and I just fill the cases of beer that I just will not drink because I'm such a snob about beer. And by every July 4th, I've got two, three, four cases of the stuff. So we put it all in cases, in, in boxes and take it down and put it at the lake. And people like go crazy for all this old beer that we won't drink at all. They get super excited. We put it over at, at another dock, not where our oh, boat is. Oh, man, this 2016 Eddie <laughs> Topper kills it. It's fantastic. Now, last year we didn't do that because last year we had July, July 25th on a Saturday. So you had to dress up like, we dressed up, uh, Fabs was dressed up like Santa Claus. I dressed up like Yukon Cornelius. We wrapped every single beer. Wrapped every beer. We wrapped a squirt gun for every kid. 100 squirt guns, 100 beers, and we went all around the lake and just delivered a present to everyone we saw. Did you mix up any of the presents? Like, did you accidentally give a kid a beer? No, no. Uh, <laughs> squirt guns aren't usually shaped like this. <laughs> well, if I brought that present over here and showed them what it looked like. <laughs> that, that's, that's a special Christmas <laughs> present. <laughs> we'll get into that some other Christmas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't do it. That's oh. actually for Banky Jarvis. All that right, is Banky. Christmas present. All he hasn't right, Banky. Yet. Wow, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know you were just hell bent on. You really wanted to talk about something tonight. I did. I don't want to steal your thunder. But, but okay, real quick, before we jump into that, tell the people where Aslan is located because you didn't tell them. Aslan is in. Uh, I'm sorry, it is not in Arlington. It is in. What's right next to Arlington? We have a next to Arlington. Next to Arlington. Doesn't it be uh, where the B? No. Herndon. Alexandria. Alexandria. Oh. Our, um, yeah, Aslan is in Alexandria, Virginia, which is coincidentally just 15 minutes away from Arlington, which is where tonight's second beer, or wait, third beer comes from. <laughs> they're, geo they're geographically yes. convenient. They're very, they happen to be super close to each other. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty neat. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for that little tidbit. Um... What I wanted to talk about tonight was a subject that I think is near and dear to everyone's heart. And I don't know that I want to eat it with this particular beer, but it's a food I often associate with beer. How about you people out there? If I had to ask you to throw in comments really quickly before I reveal the answer, what particular food do you think of when you want, you're having a beer and beer and Wings. Not a bad guess. Not, not what's on my mind. Pretzels. Also good guess. These pretzels are making me thirsty. I want a beer, but that's not it. Now. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thank you, there Matt. There you go. There yes. it is. Yeah, pizza. Pizza. We're talking about pizza. So Tom and I got on the discussion about pizza the other day, and I said to him, what kind of pizza do you like? And he said, he gave me a topping. And I said, no, 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 no. What style 
of pizza do you like? And he looked at me like, as if I was covered in guacamole and said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you know, different styles of pizza like. Per se, when you go to the pizza shop, normally, or you get one delivered, and it's the round style, referred to as Neapolitan pizza. I was going to say round pizza. I worked <laughs> in a pizza shop for years, and that was round pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe it wasn't the best pizza shop. I, I can't don't know. get Tom past geometry. He just sticks. <laughs> yeah, round pizza. Uh, Neapolitan. Now, Neapolitan is probably the one I eat the most, but strangely enough, it's not my favorite. I no. mean, mm -mm. I've got, I've got two. You know, the that two one boys. looks gross. Does it? The one, no, the one that's about to pop up for, for everybody right there. You don't like that? Uh, it's, it looks burned, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Brick oven style. No. Charred on the bottom. Mm -mm. You're a hard no there? No. Mm -mm. Did you ever have uh, Pizza John pizza back in the day from uh, a certain brewery? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's very particular. But okay, so. Not so much because the rest, I'm all for it. I'm not actually a, a, a huge Neapolitan fan. So then that took me to the next style, which is, it's kind of like a little rare treat for myself when I order it. Because it's a commitment. Oh, okay, so I'm thinking it too. Go ahead. What are you thinking? Sicilian. All right, that's that the, was the giant rectangle. Yeah. Pizza stuff. That's actually kind of a the the the, um, the Sicilian that's gonna pop up here in a second. There you go. Is uh, kind of flat. It's do not you, not a fluffy Sicilian. Do you like Sicilian? I do. Okay. But you're right. It's a commitment. And you know what I have a problem with with a Sicilian? What is your problem, Tom? I I only like one topping. I don't like multiple toppings on a Sicilian. Ah. I feel like it gets to be too much. I don't... I like the little a little more pure. Okay, so while we're on this particular top, this little offshoot of a topic, what's your go-to topping? You guys out there in South Philly pizza, yeah, yeah. Talk to us about um your favorite toppings out there, guys. What are you putting on pizza? Corn beef. Corn is that Nick? Is that yeah. Rags? Yes, Corn is. beef pizza. <laughs> Why does he sound like Sling Blade? <laughs> It was a long day that day. He doesn't usually sound like that. Um, I will do multiple toppings on my Sicilian. I'm not scared. I'll go in. I'm not scared. It always just ends up messier than I like. And then you gotta pull out the fork and knife, and you feel like a failure. I, I, I just that's just me. So I do have a dirty little secret. I will share with you. When the Sicilian first arrives on the doorstep to the table, I try and get there first because I'm a corner guy. Uh, I apologize in advance. I'm a corner guy. Eh. Like, I don't understand the people who no go preference. to the middle of the Sicilian with no none of those crunchy hard edges. Well, some people don't like crunchy hard edges. I know. I don't understand those people. Yeah. Um, in my family, we're pretty evenly split. So those crunchy hard edges are coveted by some people. And then the centers with no crust are also... like So it's a pretty happy medium. Everybody gets what they want. So we have a little bit of a... a, a once again, I'll diverge off topic, but wings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody in my house likes flats, so no one likes drums. Drummies! It's the only way to go! Nate, what? Drums. Drums? Oh, yeah. Drummies all the way. So, insider <laughs> tip, if you look very carefully at the in the Walmart freezer section, you can get four-pound bags of just flats or just drummies. It's great. Sometimes by accident, I'll just buy all drummies. I guess, I guess that's why the world keeps spinning because right. there's different kind of people. Let's get off wings. That's a whole other topic, man. I, I could talk about wings way longer than I could talk about. All right, about so pizza. I would say Sicilian is like um, I prefer it over Neapolitan, but I have Neapolitan more than Sicilian. Absolutely, yes, one hundred percent. I agree. Now, I'm thinking you're gonna go for the Sicilian variant next. I can. Oh, you weren't going to. Oh, well, I think... What are you going to go for next? I'm, I'm torn. I don't know. Oh, Show me. I'm well, dying. Listen, Geometry. Do, which way do you want to go? Do you want to go round or square? There's another round kind of pizza? Yeah. That... What? Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I know where you're going. Go ahead. Man, go ahead. that EpiPen hasn't worn off yet. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we'll go round again. Somebody had a long day. <laughs> uh, it comes out of the great state of Illinois. Yeah, a yeah. town called Chicago. I've been there. And have you been to Chicago? Yes. It's yes, a Chicago deep dish style yeah. pizza. Uh, Some people, um, pizza purists, if you will, say that's no pizza. That is a pie. 
<laughs> that is good stuff. It's another commitment. Oh, yeah. And, I, and when you go to Chicago, Chicago, it's expensive. And um, it's a real fun experience to go to the, to the really good. There's like two or three places that are really well known. It's fun to go to the touristy places. Yeah, it is. It's really good. So you've been to Chicago too? I have been to Chicago. All right. Have you ever been to the Chicago Pizza and Grinder Company? I don't think so. Well, uh, what B doesn't know is when he told me he wanted to do a pizza episode, oh. I dug deep into my phone and I pulled out other videos from the best uh, pizza <laughs> I've ever had from when I was in Chicago. So you sent me those pictures. I was like, okay, well, I see these pictures, but I'm going to one up you. Um, we all need first one saw it on the Food Networks. One of the chefs was like, the best pizza I ever ate. And it was like this three minute episode. It is pizza pot pie. Oh, Jesus. That sounds and amazing. And I cannot <laughs> explain to you without these, without seeing the photos of this, how absolutely incredible this is. So... Um, they cook it upside down in a big giant bowl. I have seen this. Okay, so it it, it looks like a giant mushroom, but no, <laughs> this is as big as an a huge plate. There's a bowl underneath there still. This has not been opened up and served. It's crazy. So when they open it up and serve it, they have they you can see a glove in the background. They have to put gloves on and toss it and like do this crazy show at the table, and then it opens up to they're, this. They're like fondling them. This crazy. <laughs> Uh, it opens up to this giant upside down bowl of pizza, and the crust is actually pizza crust. It is insane. Filled with whole meatballs. You can choose different. There's only like four different you can get. You can get like meatballs, no meatballs, mushrooms. Like it's very, it's limited what you get. Yeah. But man, it's insane. Uh, I actually bought a bunch. There you go. There's digging. Um, next, you're gonna see digging into it. These are photos I took. They're crazy, but they're they're a little old, so they're a little, they're a little blurry. This was one of the craziest pizzas I ever had. I would not call this a pizza. This is a pizza-like oh. meal. Uh, uh, do not. Well, you could go ahead. Uh, if you buy the frozen ones and take them home, uh, don't hide them deep in your suitcase. Because the TSA does not like that. Uh, they will not trust you. They will not think it's frozen pizzas, even though they're from Chicago. So just uh, maybe like carry the bag of frozen pizzas and yeah. be clear what they are. Don't hide them in your suitcase. Full disclosure of the pizza balls? Transparency, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Be clear with TSA that you're carrying big, giant frozen pizzas I, in I your I actually in saw that episode on TV and I thought to myself, that looks amazing. I think you can You get saw me on TV with TSA? I didn't say that. Uh, I think you can get those shipped to you. Oh, you probably can. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Can. It's pretty neat. That was. Uh, I just wanted to share that. That's. I wouldn't even call that a pizza, to be honest. Okay, it's enough. like a pizza pot pie, and it really does. That works. But man, craziness. Back to deep dish, real quick. I can only eat two slices tops, and then I'm done. That thing is like massive. Yeah, but that's that's two meals when you order it. Maybe three. Okay. And then just to wrap things Finish up. Finish that. Finishing this. Finish that. He doesn't want me to wrap this up because he's going to crack something new. No, wrap it up. Go ahead. No, wait. He wants me to wrap it up so we can crack something new. Correct. Just wrap up. Finish that drink. Don't wrap Relax. up the pizza. We're not done pizza. Go ahead. I'm trying, kids. He's got me all over the place tonight. Do you want me to this take guy. the next one? Oh, you're, you want the next one. You love the next one so much. I can't take it from you. I know what it is. Yeah, I got to do the next one. Yeah, go ahead. Next one is a square. It's not a rectangle. It's a square. Don't get confused. Some, some people say a rectangle is a square. We're not here to argue math. We're here to talk pizza. And it is a square. And it is the Detroit style. Are you familiar with the Detroit style? I am familiar with Detroit style. I don't know if... Uh, th there's got to be a million comments over there. you got to take a look at They're this. all talking about pizza and they're telling us to come okay. visit pizza places. Sweet. Okay, that's great. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll come visit your pizza places. We'll do that. Detroit style pizza. I said to myself, Detroit style pizza, isn't it basically Sicilian? So I did a little research. It's different. It's, it's different. You know how it's different? You know why it's different? It uses a cheese called block cheese. Boom. Very weird. It's like big slices of block cheese, not a shredded cheese like you use on all other pizzas. And it's a Wisconsin based uh, cheese. Mm -hmm. So it's different cheese. Yep. You know how else it's different? Uh, isn't uh, cheese on the bottom, sauce on top? It's the layering. Yeah. It's not sauce, cheese, topping. It's possibly 
cheese topping sauce or even topping cheese sauce. Yeah, that's and, the crazy, huh? and the reason is when the sauce has a buffer between itself and the dough, the dough doesn't get as mushy. It gets, tastes a little crispier. Yeah. It really is a, a super type of pizza. I really enjoyed it. I've oh. only had it a couple times from Collegeville Italian Bakery. Shout out. Uh, really uh, solid pizzas. There's they all... do. They even do a Thanksgiving pizza. Yep. That's a round pizza. That's a Neapolitan. And I don't know where you all out there in low expectations land are located, but there's a fabulous little pizza shop in Limerick, PA, right down the street from Railroad. Really? Yeah. I believe it's called Nino's. And they do a Detroit pizza called the Grandma. Oh, I've had Grandma. Uh, friends, uh, remember, you know, James loves your hat, loves your uh, yeah, soccer Yeah, I know James. Hat. James brought us pizza one day, and he brought us a pizza called the Grandma. I'm sure that's what it was. It was a delicious It was pizza. magnificent. Lots of toppings. Yes. Yes. Yep. And, and the, the bottom was oily in a delicious way. Like Pizza Hut deep dish, oily. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. So anyway, shout out to uh, Nino's and Limerick for their grandma Detroit style pie. It's... And Collegeville Italian Bakery. Oh, I, I, I gave them a shout. Out. I yeah. gave them another. Oh, shout you said no. Oh, okay. Shout them. All right, you're good. All You've right. been shouted. Okay, that uh, I got nothing else on pizza other than it's a delicious, delicious, delicious invention, and we love it. Cool. Helios. Oh my goodness. What? Elio's? <laughs> there is no way. The crew just reminded me. Oh Come on, you've eaten Elio's. Gosh. You've I'm had to eat Elio's. You grew up eating Dude, Elio's. There is nothing you can do to make Elio's not cardboard with shitty cheese on top. There is nothing. It tastes exactly like the box it comes in. I'm not going to argue with you that it's gourmet, <laughs> but Elio's, there is a time and a place for Elio's. Coming home, coming <laughs> home from the bar at co like at, like in college, and you just don't even have the ability to break those in ha in pieces. Oh, no. Like dotted lines, forget that. It's going in whole. And Did, you just put it right in. <laughs> you mean you're supposed to break them up? Oh, yeah. When we were little, we had to break them up. And then if you break them wrong and like you get the crooked, oh, no good. Then you get the two little pieces, the little corner broken off. I absolutely cook them whole all the time. I've never broken them. Uh, I mean, I was a cut on the dotted line kind of kid. I bet so, you were. <laughs> like, you, you flip that that shitty pizza over, there's gonna be lines on it. You got to cut right there. That's where you. That's where you. Back to it. you and your damn shapes and math again. <sighs> Man, that's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Elias when I was a kid. One thousand percent, I loved Elias. I wasn't complaining about Elias. I popped Elias out. There may have been a time or two in my life where I just threw the entire box, slab, slab, cooked it up, and ate them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every, I hope everybody has. What about, dude, what about a sandwich using the two slabs as bread? Slapping something in between. It would still be a <laughs> shitty sandwich. It would just be a shitty sandwich that tastes like cardboard. No. I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think at some point in our future... <sighs> I will concoct some type of Elio sandwich. Might have some corned beef on it, and right. uh, Tom will eat it. I bet he will. No. All right, we're gonna pause the pizza talk because I want to talk about pizza when I was in college, when I when I uh, worked at the pizza shop. We've got to pour another beer, or else we're never gonna get through this, and you poor people are gonna be stuck here forever. I'm so sorry. So, um, the next beer that we are going to uh, pour is from RER in Cambridge, Maryland. Beautiful, beautiful, very cool place. You should definitely, definitely go there, enjoy the food. They put on the funnest, the funnest beer festival you will ever take part in. I think in. we talked about this Dank before. Day Dank Fest. Days. Oh my gosh, so good. Um, two days ago, they put out this mystery flavor. It's an out of order. So the out of orders are like a, a fruited sour, way more heavily fruited sour. And in the last year or so, they've gotten super adventurous with... Um, uh, almost like ice creamy, fruity flavors. Th th this, honestly, these really, this is nothing like a beer. I didn't it like really the blue milk not. one. I got to be honest with you. Oh, I hated it. This was That was gross. So this is a mystery flavor. We don't know what it is. Um, we're going to crack that mystery flavor and, and see how it pours and what it tastes like. How do you guys out there in the audience feel about the concept of buying a beer and not even and knowing what towel. it is? I just soaked everything. You got excited. I understand. So, not even buying a beer. 
paying twenty five dollars for a four pack of this beer. Of what? And you don't know what it is. And not knowing what it is. Sorry about that. That's a bold that rag that's a, camera. Here we All go. right, here we go. We're gonna pour this beauty here. I think that's a good angle. Let's see if I can get that going. Uh, I can smell from here. I'm not sure. Uh. If B can smell it from there, oh my goodness! I already know Not that one. Yet. That one flavor is without a doubt. I know what's one of those flavors in there is. Like I said, you can't call this a beer. This is something that is quite different. Um, and show them in the camera real quick the the head on that. Oh yeah, very very low carbonation, and this kind of this kind of uh, brew or beer. You've got to keep cold at all times. If you let it get warm, a little bit warmer, the fermentation will begin again and your cans will explode. So there is lots of unfermented sugars. fruits and sugars in here. They actually stop the fermentation early so you get way more of a fruit flavor. So wow. there you go. What do you get, sir? Well, it's all the strawberry in the world. Oh, so much. Real strawberry, too. It's all like the strawberry. Yeah, it doesn't taste artificial at all. All the strawberry in the world. Wow. What else do you get in there? Like a creamy vanilla. Yeah, so the next, the, the guesses that I've seen online are strawberry with a touch of their pastry cream. They make a, a pastry cream that they actually add into some of these out of orders. Yeah, that kind of tastes like a... I think it tastes like a straight strawberry milkshake. <laughs> Rag says the mystery flavor is guac. <laughs> God, I gotta get another EpiPen. Get them up! <laughs> ah, boy. I absolutely love this. This is good. It tastes like a... If they made strawberry quick with real vanilla and real strawberries... <laughs> that is what just came to my head. I was gonna say strawberry quick. That is just like what this is. It's wild. And uh, I'm not sure what the ABV is on this guy. Wow, that's good. It is very, very hard to... Uh... Well, that redeems the, uh, the blue milk one. This is delicious. Yeah. Brewed with copious amounts of fruit, natural flavors, and lactose. Please keep refrigerated at all times. Mm. Cans at room temperature will re-ferment. So the same warning that I just kind of gave you. Same sort of thing. It's really tasty. Yeah. I don't know which mystery flavor this is. I heard... I heard... Uh, it was number three, the third one they've done. Oh, but a I, I can't be of They've done a couple mystery flavors, yeah. Um, somebody else mentioned that does that they tasted some terpenes in there. Oh, I don't get terp at all. Now, do you? I don't. I don't taste it. All I do is I taste strawberry quick, mm -hmm. but not milky strawberry quick. It's just it's just that flavor of it. It's yeah. really it's so strange. And uh, this one's actually really good. It's weird. You can't call it a beer. It's a beverage. Yes. I, I mean, that's, it's, it's a beverage. I wouldn't, I, it's not. But I don't get caught up on that. Nope. Nope. But I know some people might, you know, okay. if you love lagers and things like that, you might be like a more beer purist. This is not it. And I'm, I'm on board with not calling this a beer. That's good. That's really good. It's really good. So when I was in college, I worked at a pizza shop the whole time <laughs> and, uh, we used to, at the end of the night, we, we might have one leftover pizza. We might have five leftover pizzas. You never knew what the rush was going to be. So at 1 o'clock in the morning, we would always just start making pizzas. Because when the bars close at 2, you get a rush of people. Right, hammered. Some days you would be completely out of pizza. Some nights you would, you would have those five fresh pizzas just sitting around that, that nobody came. Like people, college kids would walk by the pizza shop on their way back to campus and pick up a couple slices. Whenever there was extra pizza, we could take it home, but working in a pizza shop and eating extra pizza every single day of your life did save you a bunch on not having to buy any kind of breakfast or lunch or dinner, but just so much pizza, there's only so much you can fit in your refrigerator. Well, did I? Did you ever game the system and knowingly make pizza that you probably no. wouldn't sell it? Okay. Uh, my boss was a, a super, he was a really nice, generous guy. Um, if I asked him for four pizzas... He'd just give me four pizzas. I never had to, I never felt like I had to. He would just give it to me. He was a really good guy. Uh, I also did really weird things for him. Like if it was slow, I would have to go take care of his donkeys and <laughs> fix his electric fence. Or he'd be like, one of the donkeys got out. You gotta, you gotta go fix the fence, man. <laughs> like, all right. 
So he was. So Tom went to the University of Tijuana. <laughs> no, he's Sicilian, but thinks he's from Jamaica. Great guy, but people who know him, his name was Sal. He's Sicilian, but thinks he's from Jamaica. So he talks with a Sicilian Jamaican accent. He's a Sicilian Macon. <laughs> it, um, it, just what I said is what it, what it is. Okay. Um, so just dismiss me. <laughs> no, I, I just can't. It, it would take me years to explain the adventures there. But what I would do is I would um, just take all those extra pizzas and just go give them to parties. I'd be like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Just take take all these pizzas. I can't. I can't. I so can't you were a pretty popular guy, right? Uh, most, sometimes I would stay, sometimes I wouldn't, but I just had to, I just couldn't take all that pizza. But it was cool, like, you learn how to make cheese steaks and, and do all that fun stuff that you would do. I also worked at a pizza place in college. I delivered, it was called Pasta Pig, and they made all their own bread for all their sandwiches. That's what I remember the most. Cool. Yes, homemade bread for the rolls for all their sandwiches. That's quality. It was great. And they was also owned by an Italian family, and we started... Every shift with a dinner. What they like fed you? Yeah, That's they, they cool. sat us all down. And oh, really? Some of us worked the counter. Some of us delivered. Were they only open for dinner? There, it was a changeover from lunch to dinner. Okay. So if you got the dinner shift and you won the two, you showed up at a certain time and you got the family dinner. I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I'm. I'm really trying not to drink it that mm-hmm. fast because it's good. It's terrible. All right, Tom, it is January 28th. It is? It is. Um, I'm not sure about you, but these two months, January and February, my least favorite months of the year. I hate cold weather. Hogwash. Okay, so apparently we have another difference of opinion. You can love, you can hate the cold weather all you want. I hate the cold weather. I understand. I hate the lack of sunlight. Days are very, very short. That does get to me. Um... I'm a guy who needs to be outside and sunshine. You so know what? I'm, I'm suffering. You know what has suffering? Me? What? I, I, let me make a recommendation for you. I uh, my whole house is wired for uh, like automatic lighting, and yes. you can just say what you need, and and it it turns on or off. I put several timers around, and uh, with like regular lamps or desk lamps with grow bulbs and plants, so all the plants are getting sunlight type light all day long and they go off at night they come on in the morning it's really nice to 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 see that kind of light growing like shining on plants when you wake up in the morning when you come home okay i'm I'm just saying it's an easy thing to do and you get that you get a little taste of that sunlight Thanks. I don't know. I may just choose to suffer in silence. Mm-hmm. Well, not silence. I'm Curl up on the couch that. with your puppy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm in rehab. It's been five days since there's been an accident, so I'm happy. Oh, no, not rehab. Uh, like OSHA. It's been five days. Five days? Since there's been an accident. Dude, that puppy's young. I know. She, right? He. He. How, how, how old, how old have we had him? Uh, we've had him a month. We think he's about... He's a month, dude. We think he's like... They said he was eight weeks when they gave him to us, but our vet said she didn't believe it. We think he's about just coming around three months old now. That is pretty solid, man. Yeah. Wow. He sleeps awesome. through the night. That's great. In his crate. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's going good so far, but he's, uh, very cool. he's a piece of work. So, I'm going to tell the story of the next beer. You have a lot to talk about. This next beer. I can't tell you enough how great this guy is how really cool he is um i still have never met him in person it's always (laughs) it's always like in passing (laughs) what (laughs) rags would like to know what take care of the donkey is slang for (laughs) no it is straight up look that comment was ready boom (laughs) take it there it is right there everybody Is that a <laughs> euphemism? <laughs> um, uh, he had, Thank you, Rex. Thank he, you. Had, he had a ton of donkeys. I mean, who doesn't? And he just liked them. He re- they reminded who him. Who doesn't? He had them when he was in Sicily, and he loved them. So uh, he had this big farmhouse and this farmland, so he would he had a bunch of corn that somebody else grew, and then he had all these donkeys, and I... <laughs> 
donkeys that would come when you shook a pizza box. Don't, if there was if there was really old like stale pizza, I would have to take it to the donkey. What do you mean by shake a pizza box? If you imagine really stale hard pizza I, I inside I, a box, and you give that a shake and it'll be like tch, tch, like real loud. It was another euphemism joke, but that's okay. Keep going. Oh, okay. It wasn't a good one. <laughs> that's okay. They never are. <laughs> they would. You could not see a single donkey for acres. If you drove up and shook a pizza box, they would come running, like, out of the woods and out of the trees. They would just come running from everywhere. What do you call a group of donkeys? Are they, like, a herd? Or do they have, like, a name? I I, I wish they were called a chunk of donkeys. I but, think it should be. I mean, that could be I'm a saying. thing. I think a chunk of donkeys would be the best. And, and what makes a donkey a donkey? Is, like, a horse in there? Or, like, a badonka donkey donkeys? A mule in there and stuff? What about a donkey donkeys? Okay. I think a badonka donka donkeys would be a good name. It's kind of hard to say, but it makes me laugh. Oh, I think you should try it. It's really nice to say. A badonka donka donkeys? Yeah, see? <laughs> it's really nice. You should try it at home. Uh, I smell a future <laughs> title for an episode. <laughs> episode 43 <laughs> of badonka donka donkeys. <laughs> so, oh no, I clicked on something by accident. I hope that didn't mess anything up. <sighs> um, so, I want to get back to talking about... Uh, this brewery that is not opened yet. We've talked about them before. It is called Bloody Chainsaw. Scary brewery. name. They are not open. They are not selling beer. Um, but you can sometimes get the chance to try some of their beers uh, at you know, no cost. Or whatever. Just super nice person. Uh, still brewing beer. Getting ready to open up. COVID, I, I believe, really threw a, a wrench into things on him. But... Uh, somebody was out today and stopped by Arlington, Virginia, and he left some samples out. And there's some really, really cool ones in there, but the one that we're most excited about is the one we're going to open because it just sounds right up our alleys, right? Like when All he right. showed me the bottle and said, you can have this or any of these other five, and I was like... Ugh. It looks Ugh. wonderful. So... Ugh. This is from Bloody Chainsaw Brewing. It is Coconut Vanilla Bourbon Rush. Let me straighten it up there. There you go. Um, just, I'm so excited for this. I really think it's going to be great. It is a Russian Imperial Stout, which is an R-I-S, with coconut, vanilla, and bourbon, mm. and oak. Coming in at 11%. Bottled 11, 18, 20. So we are going to open that up. But before I can open it up, I'm going to need the pour cam again because I got a fancy Hicks opener. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Now, Hicks opener purists who pay a 1000 plus for a Hicks opener, which is a beautiful handmade opener, but no thanks. Um, this is a 3D pr printed collab opener. Uh, one side says this is the way. The other has Grogu on it. Oh, it's pretty neat. It's got magnets built into it, so the caps will get caught on there. Has a wax cutter, so you can cut the wax if you have a wax bottle. And all of this metal is titanium, which is super. Oh. Cool. So a very cool bottle, but I just had to share. So we're gonna open this guy up. Let's see how she works. Sometimes, I don't even know how she works. Sometimes oh, we just gotta let. Look at that. Tom, you just... got all of it. Oh, like like open like butter. <laughs> Open like butter. Oh, 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 look, it just sticks. It just Does butter sticks. open? Wait. Anyway, that was beautiful. You open it and it sticks. That's fantastic. That's cool. That's you really You're not cool. impressed by that? I'm super That's impressed cool. by that. That's neat. I love the, I love your gear. Right. Here we go. We're going to pour this. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, I'm going to pour extra for me. Look at that. That's like All oily, right. oily motor oil. Did you rinse? Good? Yeah, you're in good shape. All right, let me turn that a little bit more. Oh, baby. Ooh, purdy. Bourbon Vanilla Rush from Ooh. Bloody Chainsaw. Oh, I can see. Oh, the Ooh. coconut. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that on the camera. Do you see all that coconut floaty in there? Yeah, there's a oh, slick on top. Oh, don't be afraid of that. Oh, that's going to be some amazing mm, flavor. The slick is oh, on here top. We go. Ooh, Smells incredible. Oh, I smell some nice booze in there right I it's <sighs> it's so good 
I just can't. Wow. Oh, that back end. Just wait. You didn't even get to the last part of it yet. The barrel on the back. Oh, my goodness sake. Wow. Mm. Now, it did not say barrel. So I'm thinking it's... From the uh, bourbon? I'm thinking it's done with bourbon and oak. So maybe oak soaked in bourbon. Could have been staves. Could have been cubes. Like charred cubes or staves. Because I'm getting that. Yeah, it it's doesn't very... actually say, and mo if you're a brewery, you're going to say whether it was in a barrel or not. This does not say barrel, so I'm, I think that this is, like, when I do, I know what like, a about. bourbon yeah. barrel, like, I don't use an actual barrel. I use bourbon-soaked chips or charred chips, depending on what kind of oak I want. Wow, that shim crickets. Holy moly. He killed it again. If you guys remember back to the pumpkin episode, we were gushing over the bloody chainsaw yeah. that night. Wow. It was, I just used gushing bloody chainsaw mm. in the same sentence. I apologize. But. Mm. Wow, superb. Just fantastic. Mm. Wow. Holy moly. I mean, I'm sorry. I just keep saying wow over and over again. Yeah, I don't have good words for that. It's just unbelievable. So, so if you are a person who likes coconut, it's not... Or punch bourbon, your face in the sweet sense. Or coconut. chocolate. Or the dark chocolate notes are insane. Yeah, it's like someone took a Mounds bar and turned it into a beer. Yeah, and with some barrel. Yeah. Well, there's a little yeah. bit of bourbon. No, the barrel's there. Mm -hmm. The barrel and the bourbon are both there as well. Man, that one blew me away. That, wow. I hate to leave long silence, but holy moly, that was nuts. Wow. So, Virginia? Virginia? Maryland tonight? Am I accurate in that assessment? Yeah, that's where our friend went. Your, I thought it was your cousin, Mott. Yeah, yeah. Um, he started very, very early in the morning. Yeah. And he drove to all of those places. Well, your cousin, Mott, that's a weird name. M-O-T? Yeah, some people just call him Larry. Oh, okay. Um, he's a hell of a guy. And I want to thank personally thank him for grabbing these beers and dropping them off for us today. <sighs> But oh my goodness. Oh my God. Like Virginia I'm, and Maryland. Well done, Virginia and Maryland. So there's a bridge that connects Virginia and Maryland that is absolutely effing terrifying. Oh my goodness. It is so high and, and over so much water. It is a terrifying bridge. And I'm sure that he was ready to just piss himself when he drove over that bridge. Sounds like he had some PTSD. <sighs> Man. Wow. Very, very scary. That bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, uh, the adventures are fun. Right? Adve I miss yeah, adventures. Yeah, 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 we yeah. don't do adventures anymore. because You got it? Yeah. And this was, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for him that he had to take advantage of, that he got lucky enough to be invited to. Nice. So. He had to go. Nice. Could not say no to well, that. Well, it one. couldn't happen to a nicer guy, actually. Well, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> he was just being nice because he gave us free beer. Love you, Mott. Um, man, I don't know. We're way over. We're at fifty-three, which isn't terrible for us, but we're pretty over. We should probably stop. Do you have anything else to say? I don't. Okay. Now, one thing we do have to make an announcement. You guys are welcome to start a room on Facebook. Oh, that's right. But somebody had a long day and is ready for Betty Bye. So we are not going to host a room tonight. B and I will not. Sorry. If you guys are up for it, you go right ahead. It is your page as much as, as it is ours. So jump, we jump on there. With you. Yeah. Jump in there and, and start a page whenever you want and, oh. and have some fun on there. Did you see my shirt today, buddy? Oh, look at that. Do you have two of them, or do you, did you put like a, a double there somewhere? Uh, I, should, I should just write double above double it. Double nugget neck Because there. that may or may not be a post-show beer. Just, you know, every once in a while we do a post-show beer. Usually in the room. Not tonight, though, because we're not doing the room. Yeah, no room tonight. Sorry, guys. But you are more than welcome to just start one yourselves. So as we are wrapping things up, always, I'm very thankful that... Um, you guys took the time to tune in and hang out with us tonight. And, God, this page is hilarious. This Facebook page it's just really cracks good me time. up it's really... all week long. 
uh, you guys are good, awesome. good fun group of people. So thank you for being great fun people. And if you tuned in, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you're going to watch later, cheers. Enjoy yourselves. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. And um, yeah, I guess that's about it, right? That is. We're going to do this. We're going to clink this we one have, more we time. We haven't done a cheers all night. Cheers, buddy. It's the first one. Cheers to you, too. Cheers. Good night. And we will see you next Thursday. Next Thursday. Episode 10. 10. To be determined. Oh, it's, our, it's an anniversary. I think we should give out a mystery box. Mystery box next week. If you it's tune done. in, we're going to pick somebody from the comments, and we're going to give them a mystery box. Done. Mystery box next week. But you got to tune in while we're live. How about Cheers, that? Cheers, guys. See ya.